Derek White kept Boston hanging around in another lackadaisical first half. Al Horford was the X Factor all night long with his electric 35-year-old scoring. The Time Lord and Robert Williams froze Miami's attackers merely by his presence alone, all setting up for the Jays and Jalen and Jason to seal the game with daggers down the stretch. But the Boston Celtics' most underrated players completely saved the day when it wasn't going well early on. Taking a 3-2 lead in the East Finals back to Beantown for Game 6, my prediction that Boston would win the title back on May 16th seems to be aging fairly well. This video breaks down the C's overpowering Game 5 W. Before continuing, only 10.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Finally, it seemed like we had our first close game of the conference finals, as every game had been a blowout. But suddenly, the NBA's best duo right now in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum flipped a switch and absolutely torched Miami's defense in the fourth quarter, whether it was with shots off the dribble or deep range bombs. FTX Arena in South Beach was riddled with chants of let's go Celtics midway through the fourth quarter. It was embarrassing for Miami. Kyle Lowry and Jimmy Butler need to be a lot better. But if you're a Heat fan, bottom line is, you have to give credit to Boston for their depth, execution, defense, and even more importantly than their defense, their electric star power. I thought I'd seen the dunk of the year with my fellow Torontonian Andrew Wiggins posterizing Doncic a few days ago, but Jalen Brown had something to say about that, exploding to his left hand and elevating for a beastly poster over Bam Adebayo. Despite being a Raptor fan, it's like I'm temporarily a Bostonian right now, with how much heart, talent, not to mention how incredibly likable this group of Celtics are on and off the court. Fans of the Celtics also deserve some credit, as just from my experience in the videos talking about them, you guys have been awesome and very classy in the comments section. Moving on to the man I'm going to call the Celtics X Factor in the new dad, Derek White. For all the people who are complaining about the Josh Richardson trade, which I somewhat see that stance, Derek's extra passing and ball handling, which Josh didn't provide, make him the better fit in Boston. Credit to GM Brad Stevens for acquiring White when he could have easily stayed complacent at the deadline. Other than taking the playmaking burden off Tatum and Brown, another championship quality that White gives the Celtics are his clamps. I had no idea that Derek was this good of a defender before watching him nightly in these playoffs. I guess I should have paid more attention to him during the regular season. White's not going to give you 20 points a night or anything close to it, but his value legitimately shows up defensively, where his IQ, swift rotations consistently, and pure hustle make him a top plus minus guy. Proving how valuable he is to this Celtics team's success, Derek's plus minus is actually better than this team's second best player in Jalen Brown. White's the third most valuable Celtic when he's on the floor, other than Horford and Tatum. Speaking of excellent acquisitions from GM Brad Stevens, how about bringing back the godfather at center in the versatile stretch five man who can keep the offense flowing with his passing and lock up on the other end while leading the game in rebounding in big Al Horford. Now one win away from their first finals appearance in over a decade, let's give some love to Danny Ainge for first off drafting the most talented duo in the game right now, but also retiring, stepping back, and letting coach Brad Stevens take over as GM. Stevens made a great coaching hire in Udoka, and he also nicely rounded out the starting five and bench to support their duo with acquisitions of key guys like White and Horford. In a blowout game four, it was great to see my fellow Torontonian Nick Stauskas get into the game late, and it must have been sweeter for Celtic fans to see the bleachers in Miami about completely empty, even with several minutes still left in the game. The Heat's biggest downfall in Game 4 was without a doubt the man who Max Struess called earlier this year the best point guard in the league in Kyle Lowry, practically playing for the Boston Celtics as the greatest Raptor of all time is battling a hamstring injury. But in the biggest game of the year for Miami, Kyle had zero points, went 0 for 6 from the field, and looked extremely unhealthy. Playing with a bad hamstring is no joke. Credit to Lowry for playing through it, but he's got to be better. 
especially given how much he's getting paid. The first half for Boston in Game 5 looked like Game 3 all over again. Tatum and Brown looked out of it. They were missing easy looks. Jalen turned the ball over for what felt like 10 different times, and I was disappointed at the half for the most part. Only bright spot was the former San Antonio Spur in the aforementioned Derek White, whose increased aggressiveness since the early games has mucked up Miami's defensive sets. Who knows how close this game would have been, or if Boston even would have won in the first place if it wasn't for Derek carrying the team early on with his scoring. But whether it's Horford, White, Grant Williams, and on some nights Peyton Pritchard, these guys are collectively displaying how much depth means in the playoffs. The Celtics' top guys were there to close out Game 5 when they needed to, but they also needed a strong supporting cast to get them there. Going a bit off topic from Game 5, and the best part about this Celtic team in my opinion is their mix of youth and experience. Casuals are quick to label them as an up-and-coming young team, but even their young players in the Jays have gone to at least three conference finals in their young careers. But it's the two gritty, calm, cool, and collected veterans who've seen it all in Al Horford and Marcus Smart, who are the leading voices in Boston's locker room, and to me, that's what really makes them a championship team. Now, of course, Tatum and Brown are one and two on the Celtics in terms of importance, but when you get to the finals and face off against the savvy three-time championship winning Warriors, you're gonna need guys to get everyone settled with the right message or even create a play under pressure with ease for themselves if you're going to survive taking four games against the powerhouse Golden State Warriors. But first things first, they have to close out the Miami Heat in Boston for what should be another drama-filled Game 6. I'm eager to know your opinion on who takes Game 6 in Boston. Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Devin Sedotal, who says, I'm almost positive the Warriors are going to take this at home in Game 5. This team probably has the biggest home court advantage in the NBA. They've been selling out arenas since they first assembled and went on their first championship run. They actually came mighty close to winning last game at the end. Had Kerr put the starters in a little early, they could have possibly took the lead late. Kerr knows that if the Maps win this series, it would literally take a historic performance from them. I think he just threw in the towel and will try to blow away the Maps at home. This will excite home fans for sure. The Maps had to make an absurd amount of threes to win last game. They actually were on pace to pass the record, but they had a rough fourth. All in all, the home fans of the Warriors and this team's big amount of momentum will just be too much for the Mavs in my opinion. This will allow them to advance to the finals. Bold take from Devin, but a good one for sure. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.